If you're going to build a booth, then you probably want to start with the base. In which case you will need two large pieces of sheet material made from something like MDF, plywood or OSB boards. Out of those three types of woods, MDF seems to be the most sound resistant because of the way it's made, it's dense and it's compact. You could spend extra money and get some acoustic wood, which is wood mixed with other materials to make it more sound resistant. For my project, I used 18mm thick plywood, which I purchased from a second-hand dealer. The reason being, if I purchased the same size wood from my local DIY shop, it would have cost me almost four times as much because wood is expensive. Next, you're going to have to build a support framework from construction timber. I have seen some people use 2x4s, others using 3x4s. I would recommend 2x4s. But for my booth, because I had limited space to build, I used a smaller size timber. I used 38 times 63 times 2400. If you decide to use the same size timber as mine, then be aware you might run into two problems. The first problem is many people that have bought this type of timber in bulk have complained that when it arrives at their home, lots of the timber are either bold or twisted, have lots of knots in it or splits. The second problem is if you're going to use insulation and you buy a certain size insulation, you might have to compact that insulation to make it fit within the width of the wood that you have bought. When constructing the support framework, it is usual for the joists to be 16 inches apart, from the center of one joist to the center of the next joist. Though it can be anything from 12 inches to 24 inches. It really does depend on how strong and how sturdy the material is that you're gonna to attach to the framework. When building my base, I use two screws at each joint. A good tip is to clamp the woods together so that they do not move and drill the wood first so it does not split. Once you've attached the framework to the large sheet material, then make sure you fill all of the gaps. You could actually use some sealant on the framework before you attach the large sheet material to it to make sure that all gaps are sealed. For my booth, I sealed the inside with some silicone sealant and on the outside, I used some filler to fill the gaps. What you need to realize is that you're building a sound booth and any gap where air can escape, sound can escape. So you need to make sure that you seal all of the gaps. A good thing to do is to seal it as you're building it so that you don't have to go back to doing these sort of things later on. It's these little things that are gonna make your booth successful. So at this stage, if you put your lid on your base and seal it up, you'll be left with these hollow spaces within your base. Now the sound will get into those hollow spaces, bounce around in there and amplify the sound like a drum. So you really want to fill those hollow spaces. What you fill those spaces with will depend on what frequencies you want to eliminate, how loud are those frequencies and how much money you are willing to spend. Suppose your booth is in already a quiet room and you want it as a voiceover booth so you don't really need a large sound reduction. Well then you could fill those spaces with paper, you could go to a second hand shop and buy some towels and blankets and fill those hollow spaces with those items. You could go one step further and go to your DIY store and get some styrofoam or some polystyrene panels, cut them up and fill those hollow spaces. Those items will give you a low sound reduction. If you need a larger sound reduction, suppose you're a musician playing inside the booth and you don't want that sound to escape, then you're gonna have to get some denser materials which will be more expensive. Now, if your booth is in the basement and the floor can support it, maybe you could fill your base with concrete or with some brickwork and mortar. That will give you a dense structure to reduce the sound. But for the most of us, that is impractical. And for most people, they will use some form of insulation. And out of all of the different forms of insulation out there, they will mainly use fiberglass insulation or mineral wool insulation. Out of mineral wool and fiberglass, mineral wool works the best. But fiberglass is about a third of the price. So you need to work out whether it's worth spending that extra money on mineral wool to get that extra sound reduction or saving that money to use on some other material in your booth build. Now, if you do go with mineral wool or fiberglass wool, then you need to take some precautions when installing it. 
If you read the data sheet, it tells you that you should wear a face mask, you should wear goggles, should wear gloves and possibly long sleeves to protect yourself. If you read the data sheet on mineral wool, it'll probably tell you that there are no health risks. And if you do breathe in the fibers, then your lungs will naturally expel them. I did watch a video where a scientist was comparing mineral wool to asbestos and he said that the fibers in asbestos are long and when you breathe them in they will stay in your lungs for over 50 years causing lung problems and cancers. Whereas in contrast the fibers in mineral wool are small and so if you breathe in those fibers your lungs will naturally expel them within 120 days. So within 120 days your lungs should be back to normal. There are some other videos out there that will say that mineral wool and fiberglass wool do have health risks. And they will say that a lot more tests need to be done on mineral wool, especially on the bonding agents that are used to bond these fibers together. Because they say that the bonding chemicals are more dangerous than the fibers itself. So if you're going to use these insulations, just be aware that some people say that there are risks, whereas others will say that there are no risks. Personally, I think once the insulation is sealed within the compartment and there's no air gaps so that the fibers can get out, then you are safe. And lastly, relating to the base, what I did, I bought these glide items to put under the base so that it could slide easily on the carpet. The idea behind it was that once I finished building my booth, I'd be able to move the booth with ease. Unfortunately, as I began to build this booth and add more and more layers of drywall on it, it became heavier and heavier and virtually impossible to move. So this glide item, in the beginning worked very well, but in the later stages of the build, it became impractical because it didn't actually help to move the booth. I did decide to uh, use wheels but then soon realized that the booth would be too heavy for the wheels and that's why I decided to use these glide items instead. So once the base is built it's just a matter of building a similar framework for the four walls and the ceiling and attaching them to the base. What I decided to do was to put a small strip of cork on the base before I attached the walls to it to act as a kind of dampener for the sound. When you reach this stage of your build, you have some crucial decisions to make, such as what materials you're going to use and how to attach those materials to your stud framework. Do you just screw them to the stud timber or do you use some form of decoupling method? Since this is important as it will determine what level of sound reduction your booth will have, let's take a look at this. One way to estimate the sound reduction of a construction is to look at the STC rating of similar constructions. If you look at this chart, you will see that we need to aim for an STC rating of above 50. Above 60 is brilliant. Now here is a bird's eye view of my booth for playing my saxophone. These are the wooden studs and this is the door. We need to place some material on the inside and outside of the booth. Just like the base, it can be wood such as MDF, plywood or OSB boards. But most people will use drywall or plasterboard. Some would argue that drywall is better at sound reduction since sound travels easily through wood. Others would argue that this is a myth and statistically plywood is very similar to drywall and even better at certain frequencies. However, what is sure is that plywood is at minimum three times more expensive than drywall and as such drywall is the main choice material for DIY booths. According to Wikipedia, if I attach two layers of half inch drywall on the outside and inside of the booth and fill the hollow space with bat insulation like mineral wool, then that would give me an STC rating of 45 which is a good start. Bear in mind that you can buy thicker drywall and drywall that is mixed with other materials to make it more soundproof. Adding more layers of drywall would improve the situation but not by much. The best way to reduce sound is to break up the sound waves using layers of different materials of different densities. Just adding more layers of the same material which has the same density is less effective. Another problem is that sound will travel through the wooden stud framework. So the vibrations on the inner drywall would easily be transmitted to the outer drywall. One way to reduce this is to reduce the contact surface between these materials. This can be done by using a staggered framework. Now using the same materials as before, but this time with a staggered framework, we are able to get an STC rating of 55. So by building the framework different, it is possible to get an extra 10 STC ratings, but obviously this will take up more space. 
Another way to get a higher STC rating without using a staggered framework is by using resilient channels or decoupling clips attached to one side of the stud framework. So you attach the resilient channels or clips to the stud work and you add the two layers of drywall to the other side of the resilient channels. This reduces the contact between the framework and the drywall, the only contact points being the screws. Here using the same materials as before we get an STC rating of 59 but again this would take up more space and according to an article I read most people nowadays would use other methods of soundproofing than using resilient channels. If you have unlimited space you could build another wall with an air gap between the first wall and second wall. This will be better than using resilient channels as there would be no contact whatsoever between the walls. All of the studio builds that I've seen using this method of a double wall construction have a very good sound reduction, but it's not so practical for a sound booth. There are other things that can be done to improve the STC rating. Metal frames are better than wooden ones, so you may consider using metal studs instead of timber. Putting green glue or quiet glue between the two layers of drywall will raise the STC rating, but this is expensive and many debate whether it is as effective as their website states. Also, we must be aware that all materials work poorly at reducing low frequencies. According to the data, these glues work best at high frequencies. Some have sought cheaper alternatives to green glue or quiet glue by using certain types of carpet glues. A better alternative may be to put some mass-loaded vinyl or some similar product like Soundtech 50 between the two layers of drywall. There are other materials on the market that you can attach to the framework, some of which are only available in certain countries. You may want to research these products before starting your build. As you can see, there are various ways to build a booth and a higher STC rating does not guarantee that it will perform the best for your particular needs than a lower one would. It would depend on what frequencies you need to reduce. Now, with all that in mind, there are three areas that need special attention. The door, the window and the ventilation system. Each of these can reduce the effectiveness of your booth. My booth at this time does not have a window or a ventilation system, so I will not discuss it here. I will leave that for another video. However, with regards to the door, there are three things that you can do. Make sure that it's airtight by using various draft sealants. Build a thicker, denser door or have two doors. The videos I've seen using two doors are effective as they provide a better prevention for sound leaks. But again, space is needed as one door would have to open in while the other door opens out. My door frame structure was built around the door to make sure that the door would fit perfectly. I started with a cheap door and attached a wooden frame around it and filled it with insulation. I then placed one layer of drywall on both sides of the thicker door. I removed the lock and put a ball latch there instead. When it comes to a lock, the best thing to do is have a lock on the inside that will pull the door tightly closed against the framework. I placed a strip of drywall on the side of the door at an angle so that the door would close with the least gap possible. A strip of wood was placed around the outside of the door with draft excluder to create a good seal on the outside. Then an inner framework was constructed and screwed in place against the door to create another good seal on the inside. Lastly, in order to make the inside of the booth sound good, you're going to have to cover the walls with some sound absorbing material, such as acoustic foam, sound panels, or if it's a large studio, some form of diffuser. So as you're aware, there are lots of materials that you can add to your booth framework. There are lots of woods of different densities. There are lots of synthetic materials that you can use. There are also various ways how you can construct your booth. You can use a standard framework. You can use a staggered framework. You can use some decoupling methods to decouple one layer from the next. You can build it with a double wall construction, double ceiling construction, and maybe use two doors. But whatever material you choose and how you decide to construct your booth will determine the sound reduction that you will get. My booth took me about a month to build using conventional tools. The only power tool that I used was an electric drill. All of the stud timber was cut with a mitre box and tenon saw. So it is possible to create a booth using conventional tools. You don't need these elaborate power tools. If you want to know the sound reduction that this booth gives, which has one layer of drywall on the outside, then some mineral insulation, then two layers of drywall on the inside, then click the link above somewhere, which will give you the test results for this booth. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informative and if you did then give it a like as usual and share it with your friends and if you're into the saxophone then consider subscribing to this channel and I shall see you in the next video. Bye bye.